Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. This week we continue learning the Hovos Halevavot, Duties of the Heart of Rabbi Bahia Ibn Pakuda. We're in the gate of repentance and today he's teaching us how people are moved to repentance in four different ways. So he gives us four reasons why a person suddenly wakes up one day and realizes that he has to, to move forward, that he has to connect to his essence, to who he really is. So the first one is it may be on account of a person's profound understanding of God and his contemplation of God's continual benef beneficence towards him and of his corresponding obligation to serve God. So when a person starts learning Torah, has, starts learning, starts uh, understanding the ways of Hashem, Suddenly one day he has like an epiphany and he wakes up and he says, okay, so I'm learning all this and I'm not keeping whatever I need to keep and I'm not living up to who I should be. And, and suddenly he realizes like, what am I doing? Like in my case, for example, was starting to eat kosher. When we started eating kosher, like suddenly ev everything was um, like, uh, loaded, like unplugged, like suddenly our reality became a different reality and we started understanding things that we weren't able to understand before we ate uh, non-kosher foods. So there's something that will trigger that uh, need to connect to Hashem, that need to repent, that need to do Teshuvah, to live a, a more authentic uh, Jewish life. And so he says here, he is like a servant who flees from his master and then after contemplating all the good his master has shown him, returns to him on, on, of his own free will to ask forgiveness for having rebelled against him and having fled his service. Such a servant has found the right way and understands the path of deliverance and he's worthy of being forgiven and drawn near. Of those like him, it is said, Yirmiyahu says, if you repent, Israel, says God, you will be restored to me. If you repent on your own free will before you are hit with punishment, I will accept your repentance and embrace you in my service. If you remove your, your, your detestable things from my presence and do not wonder, if you swear by my name truthfully, justly and sincerely, you genuinely wish to return to me, nations will bless themselves by him which is you, and in him, which is you, will, will they glory. So what Rabbi Pakura is saying here is that when a person starts doing Teshuvah, a person that never kept Torah, never kept mitzvah, suddenly one day wakes up and he realizes, I'm a Jew, I have to start living like a Jew, I'm not behaving like a Jew, I'm not thinking like a Jew, I'm not uh, talking like a Jew, I'm not acting like a Jew, I have to do something, I have to go back to who I really am, and he does it in a sincere way, uh, not only uh, he will be blessed, but nations will, will bless themselves by him and in him will they glory. So what it means is that not only a person that does Teshuvah is blessed, but everything around him is blessed too. Because uh, the moment a person returns to the truth, returns to his essence, to who he really is, then he becomes a blessing to everything that surrounds him. Then the second um, a reaction to a person that would go back to Hashem is a person may be moved to repentance when subjected to the Creator's rebuke and a reproach for his misdeeds and wrongdo wrongdoings. They may come to him through the prophet of his generation. Obviously today we don't have prophets, so this is not going to happen in our days. But if we read the Haftaras every week in the shul and we listen to the prophecies of the prophets, they're relevant to us today as they were in the times of the temples. So we just have to listen and be aware, be uh, awake uh, of everything that goes around us. When a person speaks to you, it's, it, Hashem is speaking to you through that person. If a person rebukes you, listen to what he's saying. See where the truth is in that rebuke. And he says, if, if he lived at a time when there was prophecy, 
out of God's faithful Torah, we can learn from the Torah also from learning from the mistakes of the people in the Torah, the Jewish people in the desert, when Moshe Rabbeinu hit the rock, for example, and he should have talked to it, or when Miriam spoke not nice, it's not that she said anything really wrong about her brother Moshe, she said, why is he divorcing his wife? It was a question, it was not even a, a, a commentary, and she was, and she was, a, and she was a, afflicted with saraz, with, a, with that malady of the skin, because she, she did la shonara in her level, in her level of righteousness, she should have never asked the question, because she knew that Moshe wouldn't do anything that God didn't ask him to do. So we learn from, from our prophets, we learn from our forefathers, from these incredible people in the Torah that I love our Torah because it's not a Torah of perfect people, it's, it's a Torah of humanity, of human nature and human flaws and what is the right way to live. So through the Torah we can also learn a lot about our own nature and our own behaviors and or through one who leads others to the service of God. So we can also be um, motivated, inspired by a teacher, by a rabbi, by a rebetzin, by someone that lives a very righteous life and we're close to them or we listen to their, to their talks or whatever it is, it, it can be your grandfather that is a very righteous person and we can be very, very motivated by them and the way they live and this will turn our hearts to serve Hashem. So the presence of such a leader constitutes a claim that God has against his creatures. No generation is left without one, as our masters of blessed memory said. So in every generation, there is a leader. In every generation, there's someone that is a, that is a role model for us. Hashem will never leave us empty handed. And you know what? Today with the internet, we, we, we get, for example, the teachings of so many great men that lived 100 years ago, 50 years ago, and we still get inspired by them and their stories. So here it says from Kiddushim and Bereshit Rabbah, it says, before the son of Moshe had said, the son of Yehoshua, his disciple, had risen. Before the son of Eli had said, the son of Shmuel Haramati had risen. Before the son of Eliyahu had said, the son of Elisha had risen. On the day that Rabbi Akiva died, our holy master Yehuda Hanasi, the prince, was born. So what it's saying here is that we're never left without a great teacher, a great role model, someone that we can emulate. And then the third one is when a person observes the testing and severe punishment inflicted by the Creator on one who took the route he himself had taken in deviating from his service, he learns a lesson from the plight of his fellow and turns back to God. So I remember my mom, she always used to tell me, like learn from the mistakes of other people. Look how other people make mistakes and learn from their, the outcome of their mistakes, of the consequences of what they did. Don't follow them, don't go and do the same mistake, just look around you, learn from others. And that's what he's saying here, like, Look, look at your fellow, look if, if this person is going through this thing, what happened to him to get to that place, you know? Something he did, it's something, the way he lives, the way he thinks, the way he talks, look how at his life. So he's like a servant who flees from his master and then here's an account of the punishment inflicted on another who has fled and he takes the lesson to heart and returns to his master to beg his forgiveness and pardon before he too should suffer punishment. So I see today so many people doing nasty things that really have nasty outcomes and, and the world wants to cover it with the hands and say, no, 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 this is good, this is natural, this is this, this is that. But you look at it, the outcome is not a good outcome. People end up not being in the right place with the right mindset. So scripture therefore says, so that the land not vomit you out for defiling it as it vomited out the nation that was before you. And this is in Vaikra. And the fourth, ex exper the fourth, um, the fourth uh, thing that has to happen for a person to realize that he has to do Teshuvah, another way that he will awake, is when God's punishment overtakes a person and he meets his, his 
meets with some misfortune. When it happens to us personally, when we are in not a good place, when things happen to us, you know, when someone is going through a hard time, our job is not to rebuke them. Our, our job is to hug them and cry with them and give them strength that they should know that there's someone there for them. But when, when things happen to us, we are obliged to look within ourselves and see what's wrong, what has to change, what's not right in my, in my midot, in my character traits. There's always room to improve. And so it says here, that uh, as soon as he perceives what has happened, he shakes off his slumber and awakens, and he renounces sin and turns back to God. And so he's like a servant who flees from his master when the master sends his agent after him to punish and afflict him for fleeing from his service, and the agent overtakes him. He runs back to his master, admits his offense, and seeks his pardon and forgiveness. Of those like him, it, it was said, when terror comes on like a dark cloud and calamity comes like a whirlwind, when trouble and distress come upon you, then they will call me, but I will not answer. This is in Mishlei. And in his distress, he pleaded before Hashem, his God, and humbled himself greatly. And this is in Divrei Hayamim. So the most successful uh, way to repent is the person that turns to Hashem in the first way, a person that is aware that he's not sleeping, that, that he listens to his teachers, he listens to the Torah, he listens to the prophets, he, he reads history, he sees what happened before, he's aware, he's aware of, 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 of his behaviors, he's aware of what's right, what's wrong, when he's learning, and he wants to really connect to Hashem. This is the most successful way to connect to God. The less success, successful and acceptable is one who does not return on he, until he's subjected to his own uh, suffering. When Hashem rebukes him in a, in, a, in a real way, it's like when a, a parent spanks his child. First he's telling him, behave, behave, I don't like the way you're behaving, listen to me, this is not the way you should behave. He doesn't listen, he doesn't listen. Then he sits him and he tells him the story of this little boy that was doing exactly the same thing that he was doing and how things end up and he still doesn't listen and then and then he's uh he's um he sees someone that he knows that is going through something because he behaved in the way he's behaving and he still doesn't listen he thinks this is not gonna happen to me and then at the end it happens to him and that's when he realizes i have to move I have to move away from this. I have to really change. So we shouldn't let it. We shouldn't let it come to that point. We can first do it out of joy and out of of, of gratitude to Hashem, of of seeing how Hashem is so good to us and how He takes care of us and how with bitachon we trust in God and, and we just want to fulfill His wishes. Uh, do his will and he will do your will and and when we live a life in which we are serving Hashem out of um, gratitude out of because this is what he wants not with an agenda then we will be spared from all these other uh, situations and so it's never late it's never late and I hope this class helps people get back to God and helps them really find their true way so I wish you a blessed week and remember, live a little higher. Thank you.